In this video, we're going to talk about type 1, type 2, or type 1 and type 2 errors and power. So a type 1 error is when we reject a true null hypothesis, and a type 2 error is when we fail to reject a false null hypothesis. So in this little table, we try and summarize where across the top is like the truth. So either the null is true or the null is false. And then over the side, we have our decision. So either we fail to reject it or we reject it. So if our null is true and we fail to reject it, that would be correct. But if our null is true and we reject it, that's a type 1 error. If our null is false and we fail to reject it, well, that wouldn't be good. That's a type 2 error. But if our null is false and we reject it, that's a correct decision. So there's two ways we can make correct decisions and two ways that we can make errors. Now, for a real life example of this, or maybe an analogy, let's look at example 216, where we picture a jury deciding the fate of an accused criminal. He's either guilty or not guilty, and they can either, so in truth, he's either really guilty or not guilty and then they can decide and declare him either guilty or not guilty. In this case, let's first decide what our null and alternative would be. So the null is always kind of your status quo or um, what you're assuming is true until you know otherwise. So in the legal system, we assume that they're true until we hear otherwise. So the null is that they are innocent. And the alternative is that they are guilty. So as the truth can either be that he is innocent or he can be guilty. Those are basically the only two choices. And then the jury can decide that either he's innocent, but they don't actually say innocent. They decide not guilty or they can decide that he is guilty. Just because in the legal system we say not guilty if they are innocent. Okay, so if they're innocent and we say not guilty, that would be a correct decision. But if he's innocent and we decide they're guilty, that would be a type 1 error. But if he's guilty and we decide they're not guilty, that would be an error as well. That would be a type 2 error because my null was false, he was guilty, and but we didn't actually reject the null that he was innocent. And then if he's guilty and we say guilty, that would also be correct. So in this case, a type 1 error is when an innocent man is declared guilty. So that would mean an innocent man is declared guilty and punished. A type 2 error results in a guilty man is declared not guilty and goes free. And you have to decide, okay, well, which type of error would be worse? So if you're trying to decide which kind of error would be worse, it's, well, kind of a personal decision. It's not a statistical answer here. But most of the time, most people say it would be worse to see an innocent man who was declared guilty and punished. Probably because none of us want to see ourselves in that situation. And our legal system has also decided this. And they really don't want to send an innocent man to jail. So in the legal system, we declare someone guilty or reject their innocence only if the evidence of guilt is beyond reasonable doubt. Because we really don't want to punish an innocent man. Now, our hypothesis tests are just like that. Okay. We're going to reject a null hypothesis, HL, only if there's strong statistical evidence against it. So it's kind of that beyond reasonable doubt. Now, due to convention, if our evidence isn't strong enough to convince us to reject the null hypothesis, we do not say we accept the null. Instead, we say we fail to reject the null, or we don't have enough sufficient evidence to reject it. Okay, so this is like the legal system. If we don't have enough evidence to prove that he's guilty beyond a reasonable doubt, we pronounce him not guilty. We do not say that we have proved his innocence. And in our hypothesis test, again, we're going to say we just fail to reject because chances are that our null is probably still false, but we don't really know for sure. We're only going to say we reject it if we feel fairly confident, okay, if we have strong evidence against it. So let's talk about the probability of our errors. Okay, Of course, we want to have the probability of both errors as small as we can get. 
Now the probability of a type 1 error is equal to your significance level alpha. Usually we'll set alpha to be a small value before we do our experiment. And setting alpha small means there's only a small chance of rejecting the null when it's true. So this means we require strong evidence against the null before we reject it. So we usually choose alpha to be between 0.05 and 0.01. Default is 0.05. Some people, like social sciences, use alpha 0.10 by default. And then you might ask, like, why don't we just set alpha equal 0.001 or 0.001, etc.? And it's because if you decrease the probability of a type 1 error, then the probability of a type 2 error increases, and vice versa. So we can just make it really small, because then we're more likely to make a type 2 error. If we relate this to the legal system again, we can say if we make it extremely difficult, to send an innocent man to prison, which would be a type 1 error. Then a lot of guilty men will go free, which is a type 2 error. And if you make it really easy to send guilty men to prison, then that means you're going to have a lot of innocent men go to prison as well, and vice versa. So you kind of have to balance between the two types of errors.